SHPA's Australian Injectable Drugs Handbook, or the AIDH, is an essential frontline resource to help ensure patient safety and quality care. It is a comprehensive reference for Australian nurses and pharmacists to support best clinical practice. This presentation will help you understand how to use the AIDH and how to find the information you need. Plus, we have included some tips and tricks to help you get the most out of this resource. The AIDH is a reference that will help you give an injectable medicine to your patient. It will tell you how to prepare the medicine, how to give the medicine, which fluids and other medicines it is compatible with, and how to store the medicine. It will also give you important safety information to consider before giving an injectable medicine. The AIDH is made up of two sections, an introduction and an alphabetical list of monographs. Each section of information about one medicine is called a monograph. The introduction contains important general information, while the monographs contain information that is specific to a medicine. The introduction gives general information about extravasation, flushing intravenous lines, safe handling requirements for hazardous drugs, and some background information about parenteral antimicrobial use in the community setting or hospital in the home. It also contains information about the commonly used IV fluids and a section that explains infusion rate calculations. I'm now going to explain each of the headings in the monographs. The monographs are listed alphabetically by the active ingredient name. Sometimes, more than one medicine is included in a monograph. Here, the morphine monograph includes information for two different salts of morphine, morphine sulfate and morphine hydrochloride. For some medicines, the monograph uses the brand name. You will see here that coagulations factors like ADVATE are listed by brand name, with the active ingredient in brackets. This is to make the monograph easier to find. Sometimes a monograph will contain information for more than one medicine, such as this monograph for filgrastim, pegfilgrastim and lipegfilgrastim. This usually means that the medicines are similar, but it does not mean that they are the same or that they are interchangeable. If you can't find the medicine you are looking for, go to the index at the back of the book where all the medicines are listed by both the active ingredient and by brand name. The drug class section tells you that morphine is a strong opioid analgesic. The availability section lists all the products that are available. Always check the product that you have against this information to make sure that the information in the rest of the monograph can be applied to the medicine that you are giving to your patient. If the brand you have is not listed, Check with a pharmacist to make sure that the information in the monograph can be used for the brand you have. If the medicine is a liquid, it will state the total amount of active ingredient and the total volume of the ampule, vial or syringe. The other ingredients, called excipients, are also listed. If the sodium content of a medicine is available, it will be listed here. A description of the appearance is included. If the medicine you have does not look like how it is described, then don't use it. Check with a pharmacist or medicines information service first. Some monographs have a red warning box. This is safety information that should be considered before giving the medicine. In the case of morphine, there are two warnings. One about the potential for respiratory depression and one about the choice of products for epidural or intrathecal administration. Other warnings include advice about allergies, anaphylaxis, special equipment requirements such as central lines or resuscitation facilities, and special handling precautions that will help protect you from potential exposure to hazardous medicines. Warnings are potentially life-saving information and it is important to read and understand them before proceeding. 
The pH of the medicine is important to know because a medicine with a pH less than 5.5 or greater than 8.5 can cause tissue damage if it is extravasated. There is information in the introduction about how to minimise the risk of extravasation. If extravasation occurs, stop the injection or infusion and follow your local treatment guidelines. The preparation section explains how to reconstitute powders or dilute concentrated solutions. Morphine does not require any special preparation. Information on how to make an infusion comes in the next section. If nothing needs to be done in this first stage, then it will say not required. An example of a medicine that does require preparation is flucloxacillin. Here, the preparation instructions are different depending on how you are going to give the injection and also what the dose is. If you are giving a 1 gram dose by IM injection, then you will reconstitute the vial with 2.5 ml of water for injections, or you can use lidocaine 1% to make the injection less painful. If you are giving a 1 gram dose by IV injection, then you will reconstitute the vial with 15 to 20 ml of water for injections. You would never use lidocaine to reconstitute a dose for IV injection. There are also instructions for giving a part dose. A part dose means that the dose you need to give is less than the full amount in the vial. For example, you would need to use a 1 gram vial to give a dose of 750 milligrams. This might be necessary for many reasons, but most commonly it is because the patient is a child. To measure the dose correctly, you will need to know the exact concentration of the solution after you have reconstituted the vial, and to that you have to take into account the displacement value of the powder or the powder volume. In this case, the powder volume of the 1 gram vial is 0.7 ml. So that means if you add 9.3 ml of water for injections to the vial, the final total volume, including the dissolved powder, Will be 10 ml and the concentration will be 100 milligrams per ml. This is a nice even number that will help you correctly calculate the volume of the dose. So for a dose of 750 milligrams of flucloxacillin you will need 7.5 ml of the reconstituted solution. You should always make sure that there are no particles in the solution after it has dissolved and that the solution matches the description provided. If there are particles or it is an unusual colour, you should discard the vial. The stability section tells you how to store the medicine. It is good practice to leave ampules and vials inside the box they are supplied in by the manufacturer, as this protects the medicine from the effects of light. This section also includes information about the stability of a medicine after it is reconstituted and also if it is prepared as an infusion. The AIDH does not provide stability information for longer than 24 hours, unless the medicine is made by pharmacy in a sterile production unit. This is because, even if the medicine is stable, microbiological stability can't be assured if it is made up on the ward. The stability information for COPAT use is new in this 8th edition of the AIDH. COPAT means Community-Based Parenteral Antimicrobial Therapy. This is information about stability of selected antimicrobials at temperatures of 25 degrees Celsius and above, and is intended for hospital-in-the-home programs. Before you make any decision or take any action about a medicine for COPAT use, make sure you have read the section about COPAT in the introduction so you understand the limitations of this information. This information is not necessarily transferable to the inpatient setting. The administration section lists all the ways that the medicine can be given, as well as instructions on how to make an infusion. If intramuscular injection is an option, a preferred site may be given, usually according to the volume of the injection. There is more information about preferred sites for IM injections in the introduction. 
Subcut injections can either be an intermittent or single subcutaneous injection or a continuous subcutaneous infusion. In this case, morphine can be given in both ways. IV injection means injection directly into a vein. Instructions for dilution will be given if dilution is required along with the time frame for the injection. For some medicines, practical examples are provided to assist with common scenarios. In the case of morphine, IV infusion is also a suitable method of administration and instructions for preparing the infusion solution are provided. One milligram per mil is a useful concentration to use because it's easy to calculate an appropriate infusion rate. You can find out what fluids are compatible by looking at the compatibility section below. Morphine can also be given by epidural or intrathecal routes, although remember the warning section advises careful checking of the product as only solutions that are isotonic and preservative free can be used. There are also instructions here for IV use in infants and children. The compatibility section tells you which fluids and other medicines the medicine can or can't be mixed with with some important limitations. In the morphine monograph, we can see that morphine hydrochloride and morphine sulfate are compatible with different IV fluids. So if you are making an infusion solution, or even just looking to flush the line, make sure you carefully choose the right fluid for the medicine you are giving. The compatibility at Y site section tells you if the medicine can be given with another medicine running through the same line. In this instance, if a line is running an infusion of keftriaxone, it would be possible to give an injection of morphine sulfate at the Y site. But what if the line was running amoxicillin? Amoxicillin is not listed as compatible at Y site, and it is also not listed as an incompatible drug. It's a good idea to check the amoxicillin monograph too. But morphine is not listed there either. Is it safe to give? The answer is, we don't know, and so it's safest to assume that it cannot be mixed. Even if the AIDH lists two medicines as compatible at y site, it's a good idea to check the line for any changes, like cloudiness or change of colour. If this happens, Stop the infusions and follow your local protocols. If you see that two medicines are compatible, it's not a green light to give them both together, especially if they are both infusions. In most cases, they should be run as two separate infusions and given according to the information in the individual monographs. Medicines that are given by rate-controlled infusion, such as inotropes like noradrenaline, should be run in a dedicated line, even if other medicines are compatible. When you give another medicine into the line, it can change the rate of the infusion, and this could harm the patient. There are some medicines that are not included in the incompatible section that should never be mixed with other medicines, because they are incompatible with almost every other medicine. These include amphotericin, diazepam, diazoxide, and phenytoin. It is important that you always check both medicine monographs when checking the compatibility of two medicines. The special notes section gives you extra information to consider when giving the medicine. The special notes section is where you will find information about reactions that might happen while giving the medicine or soon afterward, any monitoring that is recommended while giving the medicine or for a period afterward, pre-medication requirements, and extravasation risk. Use the AIDH in conjunction with your hospital's own policies and procedures. Make sure you know what your hospital's policies and procedures are and where to find them. The information in the AIDH will not cover all situations and all patients. Sound clinical judgment is always required when giving an injectable medicine. If you're not sure of something, ask a pharmacist or a medicines information service for advice. 
The 8th edition is the latest version of the Australian Injectable Drugs Handbook. It is not safe practice to use out-of-date references or guidelines, so make sure that your copy of the AIDH is the latest one. Look for the large number 8 on the cover. To purchase, visit shpa.org.au forward slash bookshop.